when you make up your mind, you're going to stay with the breath. You have to give the mind good reasons to stay. Some of those reasons have to do with long-term benefit. It would be good to have the mind trained. Be good for you, good for the people around you. But other reasons have to do with right here, right now. That means you have to have a sense of pleasure right here, right now, because otherwise those voices in the mind, the ones that want pleasure immediately, are going to rebel. As soon as they have a chance to slip out, they slip out and they take you with them. So breathe in a way that feels really satisfying. Ask yourself what would really, really feel satisfying right now. Long, deep, shallow, heavy, light, fast or slow. And where would you want to emphasize the sensation of breath in the body? When the Buddha talks about breath, he talks about it as one of the elements or properties of the body itself. It's not a tactile sensation. So you're not limited to just the feeling of that air coming in and out through the nose. Anywhere in the body where you feel that now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out, you can focus your attention there. And then you can choose whatever spot you want. What spot would you like to have gratified right now? Usually the areas around the stomach, around the heart, around the throat are very sensitive. So try to give them what feels really good for them. And then the mind will have a lot of good reasons to want to stay. And you remind yourself that you're learning a lot about the mind right here, right now. So much of our life is done in ignorance. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know why we're doing it. And no wonder we end up doing things that don't bring the results we want. So focus very carefully on what you're doing right now with the breath, and you begin to see the mind in action in the present moment. I've heard some people say, why focus on the breath? Because you're going to need a meditation object when you die, and the breath is going to leave you at that point. Well, the breath is not the only thing you're going to learn about once you focus on the breath. There's the conversation of the mind around the breath. There are the perceptions you hold. You can hold one perception of the, the breath. So you think of the body as a sponge of the breath coming in and going out. That'll have one effect on the way you actually experience the breath. You can think of the body as a bellows with two little holes that the air has to come through. And you hold that perception in mind, that'll have a different effect. Then you ask yourself, which has a better effect? And then think about it. Just the picture you hold in mind is going to change the way you experience the breath. That's a fascinating fact. Because it has implications for all the other kinds of things as well. The perceptions you hold in mind are going to influence the way you experience life as a whole. And have you sorted through your perceptions to see which ones are really useful, which ones are not? Or which ones are useful for some times and should be put away for other times? There's a lot to explore here. So when you focus on the breath, you're going to learn a lot about the mind. A lot of important lessons so that when the time does come to die, you're really familiar with the territory. You know where the dangers can come from and you know how to counteract them. Because you've really familiarized yourself both with the body and with the mind. So there's a lot of good reasons to stay here. You have to create some of them to remind yourself. And that fact in and of itself is interesting too. The reasons are already there, but you have to keep reminding yourself. So that you stick with them. So develop that quality of keeping these things in mind. That's what mindfulness is. There's an awful lot to learn. <laughs>